I'm Sujata Srinivasan. Uh, I'm a BTEC uh, uh, mechanical engineering 1992 batch. Uh, my hostel was Sarayu, uh, which was the only option at that time. Uh, and uh, I was the only girl in mechanical engineering in my uh, batch. Uh, we were the eight of 88. There were eight girls in our batch when we joined in 88. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but I was the only one in mechanical engineering. I think um, IIT was a place that I fell in love with the moment I walked into the campus. And uh, I think it's, a, it's been an enduring uh, uh, love story in, in that sense. Um, I just loved the campus and uh, the hostel experience was uh, great as well. Uh, you know, we are still friends. The eight of us, uh, we still, uh, keep in touch, uh, uh, we know uh, each other's families and uh, um, it's it's an enduring uh, relationship uh, that I have with uh, not just my batchmates, but other um, Sarayuites as well. And I think that's the hostel experience is one of the highlights of the uh, IIT Madras uh, experience because of the lovely campus. Um, as far as, I think I made the most of my time at IIT Madras. That's one of the things that I uh, uh, am really uh, happy about because uh, I tried a lot of things that I might not have otherwise. Uh, I started playing table tennis and eventually made it to an inter IIT. Uh, um, then I played tennis for the first time here. I participated in uh, elocution, debates, uh, even karaoke. Um, there was nothing that I didn't uh, try. And uh, it, that was a great uh, experience for me. Uh, so I'm glad I did that. And you know, uh, I don't have regrets uh, about uh, my time uh, at IIT Madras uh, as a student. Uh, I went to the US in 1992 after graduation and lived there for 15 years uh, where uh, I worked for several years and then did my PhD and then came back in 2008 as faculty for my second stint at uh, IIT Madras. And I should say that uh, it, you know, it's, it's great that uh, I, I get to spend more time in this uh, lovely campus and uh, uh, get to do what uh, I enjoy doing, which is uh, working with uh, bright young students and uh, uh, in the area of uh, developing assistive devices. Uh, and we've been fairly successful uh, in the last uh, 10 plus years in uh, developing devices for people with uh, locomotor disability and uh, translating them to the market. Uh, so we have the uh, standing wheelchair that has been commercialized. Uh, we also have uh, an active uh, customized wheelchair uh, that has been commercialized by a startup from our lab called Neomotion. And uh, the other product uh, that goes with this uh, customized active wheelchair is uh, a motorized add-on that converts this uh, wheelchair into an outdoor device. Uh, and that's really impacted a lot of uh, people's lives. We hear uh, uh, a lot of user stories uh, about what they have now been able to do because of uh, these devices uh, that uh, uh, we have worked to develop. Um, over the years, uh, we've made a lot of collaborations with uh, uh, hospitals, rehab centers, a lot of NGOs working in the area of disability, user groups, and uh, a multitude of users uh, who have bravely you know, tried our devices uh, right from the early stages, given us uh, feedback, because user-centric design is something that we strongly believe in, so that uh, the end result is something uh, the users want so that we are designing things, products that people uh, really need. Um, so that's been a great 
uh, experience as well. And I, I've had uh, wonderful students who've gone on to do a uh, uh, lot of uh, wonderful things and who have made uh, R2D2 what it is uh, today. You know, so uh, we've gained quite a bit of uh, uh, recognition for our work, uh, both uh, in India as well as uh, uh, outside. And a lot of the credit goes to the wonderful students and staff who have uh, done a great job. In uh, And we continue to, you know, uh, we are working on several other devices, working on more startups. Uh, we really want to change the assistive device landscape. Uh, not just in India, but you know, eventually uh, globally as well, uh, because assistive devices are so important for inclusion. Um, we need, um, you know, imagine if all of us uh, couldn't have eyeglasses, right? Most of us wouldn't be able to function. But that's just what an eyeglass is. It's an assistive device uh, when you your body is not able to do something uh, effectively on its own. And that's just what a wheelchair or a prosthesis or any other kind of assistive device is. And so we want to remove the stigma around uh, assistive devices uh, by designing them uh, beautifully so that it's something people feel proud to own uh, that really enhances their quality of life. Uh, that would help them uh, participate more effectively in the community. Um, so that's that's what uh, we have uh, set out to do, and I hope to continue this uh, journey for some uh, some more time. I would also like to thank a lot of alumni who supported uh, these projects in the early stages, uh, which has helped us to uh, you know uh, come to this uh, level. Um, it really helped us. Uh, the uh, funding for the center from uh, TT Jagannathan of the TTK group, uh, uh, that and a lot of individual alumni have contributed uh, um, uh, to our uh, efforts. And of course, a lot of corporates through their uh, CSR uh, donations have also made uh, a big difference uh, uh, and helped us take our work to the next level. Uh, I enjoy going for walks in the beautiful IIT campus. Um, and um, yeah, I just like hanging out uh, with my uh, family and uh, uh, that's about it. Yeah, <laughs> do some reading. So, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's really hard to answer that question because your perspective is different. You know, as a student, my perspective was different from what it is now as uh, faculty. Uh, but looking at the students, I feel, uh, you know, one of the things that's improved significantly, at least in the last three years, thanks to some coordinated efforts, is the gender ratio. Uh, and I, it's nice to see many more girls joining the undergraduate uh, program. Uh, back then, it was a very lonely time for me in class. Um, so that that part is something that, you know, I'm, uh, that was not such a great, uh, uh, that's not such a great memory for me. Uh, the difficulty is uh, because of the fact that I was uh, the only girl in class. Uh, so it's nice to see that the gender ratio is uh, a lot better now. So the interactions are, uh, I think, healthier uh, between uh, uh, the genders. And uh, so that's, that's I think, uh, a very good uh, thing that I'm starting to notice. The other thing is I find um, students these days are a lot more adventurous than we were. You know, they are willing to take risks. Uh, they want to be entrepreneurs, and uh, I, I'm just, you know, I just admire their uh, 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 willingness to uh, uh, take these leaps and not just, you know, settle for uh, the same thing that everybody else is doing. So I think it's nice to see more numbers of uh, students. Many of them also have more hands-on experience. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, 
things like uh, CFI have made a big difference uh, in that uh, sense, which is again, I think an alumni initiative uh, because more students uh, participate in hands-on projects. And uh, so they are a uh, lot more willing to take on uh, uh, product development uh, kind of uh, projects. So that's another positive that I see. Uh, I would say that I would like to see more students actually playing outside. I think that's probably the one thing that's uh, uh, a stark difference from uh, when uh, we were students because we pretty much spent a lot of time uh, outdoors uh, because we didn't have the devices that are there now. Uh, whereas now I think students tend to uh, spend more time with their devices and uh, uh, socializing on uh, on their devices than in person. So uh, hopefully, you know, uh, they'll, that'll change, that'll change. Uh, I hope the uh, pandemic in some way forces them to change that. You know, I hope they're sick of their devices and uh, being indoors by the time this is over and uh, uh, we want to spend more time outdoors, yeah.